Welcome to The Journeyman Cave, a podcast where we meet and chat with some of boxing's more seasoned road warriors, hosted by Mark Shakespeare and Chris Scarf. Welcome back to The Journeyman Cave, everybody. This is round 23, and with me, as always, is my good friend, Mr. Mark Shakespeare. How are you doing? All good, mate. We always are, aren't we? Aren't we just? Who have we got this week for round 23? We've got a first local on the series this time. We've got Mr. Ben Davis. The other Ben. Yes, the Barbarian. Barbarian, what a name. Apparently, as you mentioned in there, apparently he used to go around with a little skinhead when he was about eight years old, hitting people with sticks. <laughs> so and that's how he got the nickname the Barbarian, so it stuck. It well deserved. Yeah, we've, he gets mentioned, well, he has been mentioned quite a lot as Ben, and mostly to do with like his... Uh, expertise in you know diets and that sort of knowledge and so I'm glad we got him in I think we've been after him for a while haven't we yeah and we're a little challenged didn't we he said he could easily lose me a stone in six weeks didn't he six weeks I think essentially I just have to stop drinking yeah I think you'd lose two stones <laughs> but uh, no I think I'd, I'd set my sights on six months rather than uh, six weeks I might just about manage that <laughs> I think me and all mate but yeah he's a great guy he's been and um, obviously we had to get him in after he got Ben Wager in yeah because they are a double act and we followed him over all the way through the career, obviously. Me and you went to a few of the fights. Mm. And he had a, a nice dust-up, which we'll talk about with Frankie Borg, that's my favourite. Really good win for him, that one. And then I think, unfortunately, I think he'd like to do a few more fights, but I think he's um, better half put paid to that and told him. Well, I mean, it's a dangerous spot at the end of the day. I mean, as we've learned, as I've sorry, as I've learned through through the chats we've had with people, and, you know, it, to put yourself through that, I think it, it does have sex some, not just guts, but you, you're not just doing it on your own. You've got other people to think about, aren't you? So when that you know, comes to your family, who can blame them? But bloody hell, he looks well, doesn't he? Oh, I tell you what, mate, he's, he looks very trim, doesn't he? Christ, I honestly, I felt so inferior. <laughs> I can't believe that he actually went on holiday and his missus took a photo on him and he had a bit of a dad bod. A oh, right. couple of little love handles at side, and um, he saw that picture. And then within four weeks, you're back to his normal then. Yeah. Um, dedication. He goes through things with a five, fine tooth comb, does Ben. And he's a great guy, and I'm sure everyone will enjoy this interview. I reckon so. So let's get him in. Let's do it. Well, I'm going to talk about his bloody fitness, me. Look at him. I know. <laughs> Quite a specimen, Ben. He is, isn't he? <laughs> this, is why, this is why I wear baggy clothes. To hide, to hide my physique. <laughs> Could you get me a Scarfy in shape in six weeks? Six Could you get me at least a, a stun off in six weeks, I reckon? Yeah, six weeks easier stun. Never. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to hold him to that. What are you going to eat then, mate? Come on, what's it, What's the secret? What do I eat at more? What is the secret to losing that physique yeah, then? Because everyone comes to you, mate. It depends what, what you're trying to achieve, doesn't it, really? In my, in my eyes, like I say, because I've done, like I said, bodybuilding, boxing... I never tell someone to do something I've never done. So I kind of know what works and what don't work. And like I say, it just comes to experience where day before weigh-ins to on-day weigh-ins and whatnot. But then you've got your general people just walking the street as well that still want a bit of life. So it's how much weight they're going to drop, how quickly or how longly, if you know what I mean, how long it's going to take. So basically... It depends what, so what I, people's goals want in. So if I were going to lose a stun then, what would I have to do? What would I bu- bully me into then? Would I, have <laughs> to be hot, would I have to be hot bags or would I have to be eating green beans it, or what? It depends. Like I say, when I had my gym, it was, I had people in twice a week. That were it, doing what they want. And they said, just go for a walk for one day a week. For three days a week, it's exercise plenty. When you're an amateur boxer, you train three days a week. So if you can get three days a week and sort your eating out and drinking mainly, probably for a lot of people, that's... That's it. That's why they're nodding the head, isn't it? It is. Empty calories, they call them. Yeah. You don't, you're not a drinker, are you, Ben? No, I'm not a drinker at all. No. Have you ever drunk? I just started drinking when I started boxing. Did you? Is that after fade? <laughs> I always know you were yeah. wager. You. you used to go out for a, a nice breakfast, didn't you, day after your fate? Yeah. And yeah. Um, I just wonder if you're... Because the physique's amazing, mate. I mean, 
you must be the most mentioned person on this podcast. <laughs> it's one of them, definitely. Yeah, and it's it's good to finally get to a band that I don't podcast. Yeah, I went on since um, Ben, and we and that one on series one, one to. Mm-hmm. So it's good to we've been wanting to get them for a while, mate. I know you've been busy. So um, I'm trying to think now, mate. Actually, I've gone blank for a second here. You're on about drinking. That's what you're on about. Drink why, when I start drinking. Yeah, why did you? What, what made you start drinking? I, ne- then? I didn't. When I was young, dumb, growing up, sixteen, seventeen, I was always into football. I was decent football, decent standard, semi-pro. Been to a couple of academies, and then it was like eighteen. I kind. I went from Maltby Main, which was obviously semi-pro decent side, decent standards, whatnot. One cup got picked up for Huddersfield. I thought I'm going from many here to under 18s I'm absolutely boss it, no problem. The absolute speed at football, at under 18s football thing, I thought, this ain't going to happen, this football game, I tell you what, these, <laughs> these are proper athletes. And I'm thinking, I've just been hammering it for, with men, but obviously it's a lot slower standard. But anyways, I kind of knew where I were at that. And I thought, that's not going to happen for me. So I started lifting weights because I was going out into town and whatnot, 17 year old as young lads do before, and I'm thinking, I want to be big, I want to lift weights. And I thought, I just want to lift weights for the sake of lifting weights, I'll, I'll compete at it. So then competing bodybuilding at 18, that's obviously kind of where dieting came from, but at 16 I were milk and yeast intolerant, so I always had to look into what I were eating anyway. So of course I started to look into what I were eating, I became quite passionate about it. And then obviously coming to 18, bodybuilder, 18, 19, it was like, right, next step after you've done naturals is to go on steroids. As Wade will tell you, I'm absolutely petrified of needles. No needles come near as me. <laughs> Same he as me, to... mate. Same oh, as me. Yeah. We used to go for his boxing medical together and he used to just absolutely laugh his head off trying video, mate. Like, cause I'd just, I start with this most nervous laugh and like girly laugh and I could not stop it. And I'm thinking, can't you just punch me in my nose and take blood from my nose or something rather than... It's horrendous, <laughs> isn't it? it? Horrible. It just goes through like a scientific diagram going through my head where it's going through you. Yeah. Now. Not for me. They make me laugh at a little joke. Who's that, innit? I mean, they know me by first name at hospital. <laughs> they'll, they'll call me and after they've done it for three months, my bloods. Yeah. They'll call me, Mark Shakespeare, I go back, bed's laid back, fans on, and they're waiting for me. <laughs> no. It's I, was, I hate them. I went to the dentist feel, about a year ago when I had a foot, it was like lockdown time when all that crap were about. And uh, I went for an abscess and my tooth it were killing. It like snapped off and then it was hurting. It, 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 it numbed it four times. He's saying, is it numb? He says, says, yeah, yeah. He's tried and went, no. Mm. He's saying, right. He says, well, I'm going to have to send you off some antibiotics if it don't work. He says, right, what's the other thing? He says, well, I can just go at it. I says, well, just pull it out now, mate. I says, I ain't coming back for more needles in my gums. Did that to me as well. I've had that so experience. So I had one ragged out rather than having it injected. I thought, no, yeah, not same for as, me. I wonder if that's swing with phobia and needles. Because when I went to dentist, I'd rather have the pain. Mine was the same. I went to dentist and they injected me and she says, I never been injected before, and she says, "Oh, you'll start feeling." I think I said, "Oh, I can't feel your face," mm. and I'm there, me, and I'm thinking, "All these people say it numbs you, and it no, it's not this." Yeah. I thought I, I can sort this anyway. She got drill out. Fuck, fuck it, you know, I don't pain like it. It's she goes, ball. "It's all right. It's just cold water and drilled in again." I went, "That's, That's not, not cold, cold water." water yeah. And she says, "What do you want to do?" And I says, "I was like, I don't know how I said on my feet to be honest, and didn't yeah. pass out." And she goes. Well, I've nearly done it now, and I says, right, just do it without anaesthetic. Yeah, and I just yeah. did it without anaesthetic, and it's yeah. the most painfulest thing I, had, I have ever I done. I can remember walking next day, I'm thinking, what, the two finals, I ain't back in my leading, because I gripped at seat that I had, I'd like cramped up all my ah. hamstrings and my calves and that. But yeah, so that's, like I say, after bodybuilding type of thing, from to that, then it was, I don't want to go on steroids, so I had six months of doing nothing, and I've got like kind of a bit of an obsessive head where I need something to do. So it's like, what shall I do? I, I like having a scrap. I've been working indoors in town from being 17, like a, a shrimp been like yeah. from an umpty, obviously, bodybuilding thought. I thought, well, I'll have a go at this cage fighting game because Craig Burke from Barnsley had yeah. a cage fighting gym. So I, goes you know, Berkey, don't you? so I goes down there, start doing a bit of cage fighting and whatnot, and I'm thinking, I'm all right at this game. I'm not bad, but couldn't get grasp, can't get the grasp of being kicked in my legs and blocking. From coming from a football background to blocking with your legs in your shin, I'm thinking, it's, we're going through me. I thought, well, it's not really for me, this. And I was doing more with my fist and out else. And then I thought, well, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll go for it anyway. I'll, I'll see what it's like. I'll get a fight. So I tells me, I'm having a fight at this cage fight. My dad goes, you're not doing no chuffing thing as thing. I said, I'll take your box in. 
whatever, I just want to fight, I want someone to go to. So, like, so you know, he took me through to Glen Roses. God knows why I went through to Glen Roses, but that was just where he took me. Well, we weren't and actually gifted for gyms around that no, time, were we? To no. be quite honest. And like I say, it were a right wake up call, really. First time I went through to boxing gym, never been in a boxing gym in my life, stuck me in with John Fuchs and Edward sparring. So, well, yeah. <laughs> well, I see, first time I heard about thee, Ben. Yeah. When um, I mean, I've obviously been a fan for years and that, but I probably know him from working with him. Anthony Burton, who told us about thee. Yeah. And he says, Roofer at our place just started boxing, Ben Davis. I said, Oh, I'll keep an eye out for him then. Is he any good? And um, Ant says, I've no doubt about it because he's one of them kids or whatever he does, he's just naturally gifted at doing it. That's right, yeah. So <laughs> I says, oh, we'll look out for him then. And obviously then we went to shows, but unfortunately we used to buy tickets off wager. But you didn't yeah. go bad with tickets, did you, with your sponsors? Be- between no, you, you were no. amazing. You I, know? Uh, yeah, I definitely. With my sponsors, I used to... It's like I said, I've always been a bit clued up and I thought, I'm not going for sponsors. Like, everyone will go, I want my medical, I want this and all that. And they'll stop. Once they've got everything paid, thought they'll stop. I thought, I've got room on my T-shirt, see, I'm going to keep going. I don't want sponsors for yeah. this and all that. I thought, if you're sponsoring me, I just want your word. And they're like, what do you mean? I says, if you want your word, give me a full table every time I fight at home. Yeah, right, sound, yeah, smash it now. It's, like, well, it's this much, that much. But if you then sell your tickets, it's not costing out to be my sponsor. Yeah. And that is a big... Well, we mention it on a regular so, basis, like a block and record. It's massive. Tickets are the absolute bugbear of any fighter, aren't they? Massive, yeah. It's bloody hard to sell tickets. Oh. But yeah, I know you and Wager used to have plenty... Oh, you sponsor you, mate, anyway. We'll have were, to get a camera. Yeah, there were Pickering's the Pontifract that were uncle-in-law. Yeah. He's obviously butchers, so <laughs> still gives me a meat now. Good lad. Um, and we've got um, Triple M Motors. Um I had a few. There were obviously there were Phil Marsland builders, but he's not doing that. As uh, Mortgage Solutions, he used to be around here as well. I had I had loads of sponsors. I can't even remember them all, which I'm not shocked by really. But there were more friends than than sponsors, so it, it worked out good for for me really. So then I could focus on. I never really said I'd focus on making weight because it was just easy making weight. That were I used to. That was probably a downfall to my career, really, that. Because I knew I could make certain weights. I probably wasn't my strongest at them. Mm-hmm. So, like, I think now I'm walking around at, say, 13, 4 or something. I used to take another two stone off of this. Yeah. And it's like, right, that's a bit excessive when you look at it from this point of view, but... That yeah, looks just look, look so ripped, though, mate, it ring. Mm. And you and Wager were like... You were always... I mean, Wager had ballooned up, wasn't he? Yeah. But you were never... You were always yeah, naturally, you I could, know. You I were, could keep some yeah. light shape, but my weight would throw up because, mm. like I said, I never really got below 12 stone on a day before. I'd make 11, 6, and then 11, 5, 11, 6. And then a week after, I'd be up at 13 and a half. Yeah. And then if it went two weeks, I'd be 14 and a half. So I'd, I'd never go really above 14, 5. I think that would be that would be weight. Mm. But then I'd get back down to 11, 6. But they used to outwager out with his weight, didn't they? I heard about him a not bath one time. Yeah, wager the well, I kinda <laughs> took over, didn't we, mate? I kinda what I I'm not being big at all, but I kinda won him his central area tax. If it weren't for me, he wouldn't have even had fate. Oh, you know what? I can I can vouch for that as well, and I think he will. Because him he, he could done all his things and it were on a night shift and his weight was sticking, it was proper, he were winding me up. I'm thinking, what are you eating? <laughs> and obviously it's not, it comes into his stress levels and obviously sleep pattern and whatnot, and he were holding water, couldn't get rid of it. I says, Right, you'll be sound and we've got morning weighing, it's the last check weight weighing before you fight. Right, sound, no problem. This is your weight, you've got to be at. Right, come down. He goes, I'm over with train. I'm thinking, sweat's all turning. He just won't budge. I'm thinking, hey, he's got another two pound to lose here. What What the hell's happening? I said, I'll tell you what, go home. I says, what do you mean? I says, well, yeah. he goes, boxing board, man. It's coming down to do your check weight this time. In fact, I can't mention his name, can I? Because he might get in trouble. Well, we can always cut that <laughs> out. Cut that one right, out. Right, let's start right. again. Let's start, start again. Says, from right. Yeah. Boxing board man's coming down at a certain time to do your check weight, this and the other. Right. I says, right, so we've gone. I says, get your center phone. So he's gone home. I says, right, whatever you do, I says, do not answer my phone calls. I'm going to ring you and ring you and ring you. Don't answer. I'll text you before you answer. Like, oh, all right, all right, all right. So anyway, so he's gone home. He's come around and cracked. I says, I don't know where he is, mate. He's been on night shift. He must have been asleep. He says, I'll get 10 minutes. I'm like, all right, no, but it's 10 minutes. <laughs> Sat there. Do you want a cup? No, I'll have a cup. I ask things, talk general chit chat. I'll try him again. He's not answering me. I says, well, I'll tell you what, I'm only working at 
so and so and so, so and so. I said, I'll uh, tell him to come to me and do check weight with it. I went, all right, sound, I will do when he gets in touch. Right, no problem. Dead rate rings up and says, right, have you been in that bath? He goes, yeah, yeah. He says, right, get back down here again now. He <laughs> says, get back down, get some scales. And he's like, just creeped into his rate. I says, right, ring him up and get you sent through for check weight. So he'd done the bath, come down, got his weight, went through, check weight, gone and absolutely bloke kid out in about he two did. or three rounds or something. And he, he was just, and he, he'll talk to it more times, or he just, he said he could hear it. Corner yeah. telling them what to do and like you were yeah. in his corner at time one, he just landed perfect. It was it it was a few times like I said we he boxed Ryan Mulcan as well in Blackpool and I I kind of went through a thing with Ben where I train him for some fights mm. and then train with him other fights and I had, it annoyed me because I was like I always wanted to go in corner with him yeah I always wanted that in corner because I could obviously when you. When you train someone, you get like a bit of a relationship with yeah. him, and I can see what he were what he were doing anyway. We'll find this Ryan Mulcan, and same as anything, I researched this Ryan Mulcan, looked into him. And I says, right, I said, just stay out of the way. First few rounds, stay out of the way. What do you mean? I said, just dance around him, like drill we do with circles for your feet, four rounds warming up, do that, don't throw a shot. So what do you mean? I said, just just jab, don't throw out. If not, it's landing cleaner anyway. He's done that. I says, when I tell you go for it, go for it. So he's going down to because where's it? When he boxed Townend, he yeah. just blew out. blew out. That was it. He just blew out because he had that hot head about him having a fight. There were no, not not putting anyone down or out, but there were no coaching from yes. that side who knew him. Because he had a coach who used to train him and then he'd go to Glenn, Carl mm-hmm. or wherever to go and take him in his fights. So they'd not know what Ben were really about. Whereas obviously I'd trained him, I'm like, I know exactly what he's got, I know exactly when he's done, I can read him like a book. So I'm like, right, four rounds just dance. It says, and you've easily got six rounds of Ben Wager speed at you. Yeah. It's so right, sound anyway, it's gone out, he's gone, blah, blah, blah. He's dang, he's hit him with a body shot in six rounds and remember dipped it. him. Remember I'm thinking, it well. he's got him, he's got him here, this is it, he's going to win this. T-. And it were, it were a tough, tough fight, right fight, like, give, give me his jewels, like, Mulcan came out and did it what for to then I think we're only like a point or something. It went to Mulcan it were but and that were on a way show of a ten rounds now. If that's in Barnsley, that's a way to win. That's a way win. Yeah. Every time, innit? Yeah. So I could say that and I always had a little bit of a thing I wanted to be in his corner for a lot of his fights to be fair, but You you sure would it perfect though, mate, when you were both in it towards end. I, I always remember yeah. when you had them black t shirts on for his fight, you yeah. know, you just looked both of you just looked the part, mate. And it's a shame you didn't get one of them, my favourite belts as well. Central area. Yeah. Yeah, I should have done, to be fair. But it's uh, bent all boxing for you in my, my eyes. I got I got stitched up in a little bit, but it's learning curve, isn't it? Well, I, I think we ought to get uh, Ar- Harry Matthews under a fate. Oh, yeah. Six Ar- weeks for <laughs> Davis, and let's get a central area hotline. We'll have a wait, boy. Harry Matthews, yeah. yeah. Well, that, that were only an eliminator, wasn't it? That it one was, Harry Matthews, yeah. And he did say to me, it should have been, mm. he says, it should have been a rematch, and um, he did mention, he said, it, it should, it have, should been have been for the title. That, that, going back to when when I used to, when I first started turning pro, I were at Glynn's, and then went from Glynn's to Mick Wales for one fight, then to Sean Thicket. Out of all my fights, my face had give in before I'd give in. Mm. I was marked up or even if I was black, blue. I boxed Harry Matthews. I looked like I was ready to go for an Harry Matthews modelling shoot. It's near mind hotels. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at John Lathan, who's ref me. God knows how many times from my debut. And I went down, I says, I says, John, I says, have you scored a fight to him? He says, well, they were busier than you. I says, yeah, but no, it's hit me. Yeah. I says, look at it, say to me face. I says, it's all right saying he's busier than me. If I turn around and start punching corner posts, I'm busier than him. <laughs> I says, what, what's that? I says, look at meaningful shots landed. I've dropped him in ninth round. I'm like, what, how can you, how can you not? I says, well, he's just undenied about it. But that, that for me, I, I knew I won that fight, but obviously Harry probably says he won that fight and that, that's boxing for you. Everyone's got a, got their opinions on it, but, for me, they say a face tells a picture. My own face told that picture of that story. I was there, so I'll I'll not put you on the thing and say who won. <laughs> no, to be fair, mate, but, I, I probably thought you won because at the time, Harry Matthew would want a journey man either. What it? No, we were he trying. Decent, yeah, so, we were trying. He was, uh, I mean, I always put my cap. You know, I mean, I always throw my cap. We're from Barnsley's fighting. Yeah, I mean, I know we're coming up to July. I think it's Joe Ducker who I like. Right, he's fighting. Um, Thing into Dempsey Whale, right? All right so yeah. that is coming out of retirement for that, right? Okay, so that should be a belter, yeah. Now, 
I'm always it underdog and for a way corner. But like I said, when someone's from Barnsley, mate, yeah. you've got to just go support you, your own. You've got to support yeah. your own, aren't you? And you know, but like I said, I'm not even looking for like, like I said, we we were with that fight. It was I just look back. So like I said I trained with Dave, Dave Ulley. Well, to be fair, I had a time out after a Fox Frank, Box Funky Borg because I I'd done my shoulder sparring. Tommy Langford, British champion. I'd, like I said, open admit it, I were a gym rat, I'd go wherever it best for me. If sparring came available against other people, I'd go because I want something different to learn off different people. And I'd, bought, I'd sparred Tommy Langford and I'd done my rotator cuff and I thought, it's oh, proper hurting this anyway. And I, and I went through training, boxed Frankie Borg, bet Frankie Borg, which I think were... It's my best win. Though, I've definitely. wrote it down here on my paper. Definitely, that I think it went absolute peach and a win, and mate. That, and that that fight got made. I wanted that fight because he was Welsh champion. Yeah, and I wanted to win the Welsh title because I mean Davies heritage of being yeah. Welsh. I thought, right, I want the Welsh title. That will make that will make game that in boxing. I didn't want no else. I won't bother Central. I won't bother. I wanted that Welsh title. So he was the out and out Welsh t- champion. And then the fight got made. Um. And then they said, you're not Welsh enough. <laughs> I'm like, what? My grandparents are Welsh, but I'm not Welsh enough. So I said, I'm not bothered, Carl. I said, the fight's fight. I said, 10 now fight. It's going to be a good fight. I want it. So I rate it, Sam will make it. I'd done my rotator cuff prior to it, but anyway, did the full fight. We're in nine wars, absolute slugfest. To this day, boxing board man that's thing, he says, that's the most entertaining fight I've ever seen in Barnsley. I said, well, I'll hold my hand up, that's, that's an achievement then. Because it, were a, it were a cracking win, that, mate. Because, I mean, like I said, I, I dropped him in first, I dropped him in fifth, and I was behind on points in ninth before I stopped him. He boxed my head off. He was fast. I can remember who came out. I came out at the ring. He had Lee Selby in the ring with him. And I'm walking out, I'm thinking, this is my town, this. Who's this? This yeah. is my town. I thought Selby were there. I'm thinking, what's going on? All right, fetching this. So I'm not about him wanting all attention. I says, no, it's when you box, it's thinking, this is our night. This is Barnsley Ben's night. We've sold it. We filled this place out. I've done 12 tables ringside. I've done so many tickets. All the, oh, I got my back up about me. So I goes in. I always used to go into ropes. I used to go rope, 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 rope. Do every rope and feel string. And I ran, I re- literally just ran at Lee Selby. Watch back on I just wanted at him. I thought, he's moving out of my way. Mm. And he did. <laughs> I thought, yeah, right, I ain't bothered about no world champion. Anyway, and he come out of this Frankie Borg first round. Blah, 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 thinking, chuffing hell, he's been sparring with him, hasn't he? <laughs> he's fast as hell. I thought, wow. I thought, I'm going to have to hit him with this. I'm going to have to put a stop to this. So I did. I went, bang, jab. And it were one of them jabs where you practice it on bag all the time, where it's every bag, bang, step in with it really hard. Went, boom, hit him, bang, straight down on his backside. I thought, this is an easy night, isn't it? <laughs> this is gift eight of a fish round. I'll have some of this, knocked him out with a jab. If only. Oh, if only he got back up, yeah. And then absolutely... It won a belting war, won it? Yeah. I think I... I've never been dropped, never been down, but that fight, I all manned it. Uh, he hit me because I'd been I'd done my shoulder rotate I'd been on or taking the proxins and all sorts trying to get rid of inflammation in my shoulder next thing I'm thinking my belly's not right three days before I fight I'm saying to Alice I'm going to have to go to the doctors my belly's not right it's hurting when I eat it burns goes to the doctors oh you've got gastroenteritis I thought right laugh so I took these tablets it settled it quite a lot come to fight night as I'm throwing this jab he's slipping right inside bump straight to the body huh <laughs> Bump straight the thought, chuffing hell, if he hits me with another bump, I thought, oh, and I dipped, and as I dipped, because he hit me with it, ref's gone, stop boxing. I'm thinking, he thinks he's hit me low. I went, chuff, referee, come on. Yeah, brilliant. I thought, I thought, I'm going down, I thought, I'll just have a little five minutes here. I thought, bloody hell, I says, come on, what are you going to, took a point off him. I thought, oh, we'll have some of that. So he had a point taken off him, I dropped him twice. And I was still behind on points. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So then, I, like I said, I had to pull it out at bag and, and stopped him. And like I said, I think that fight, the whole Metrodome crowd were on feet from start to finish. It were, it were, I watch it back and I and I watch watch it back now and I'm just looking at crowd. I'm not even watching fight. I'm thinking, everyone loved that. That was a proper Rocky fight. It was a fa- definitely go down in Barnes list, yeah, I think, mate. And it, I'm glad you said it were your biggest win. Cause to me, it was all weird. It yeah. was absolutely, you know, it, brilliant. Yeah, I wasn't there that night, yeah. but as soon as I... 
I got a message saying you won. And I thought that is a good. That's a statement. Good. Win that proper proper statement. Win. And yeah. a few people are messaging saying, "Oh, Lee Selby's here, so they must fancy it." Yeah, you know. Of course, and you, just, you just nailed it. They don't come from Wales for no other. They? Mm. they said, and they're all saying, "Lee Selby's here, he's taking photos." And I'm glad that that took the attitude into it and thought, "This is my den, this yeah, mate." It is, and that's the way it is. But as for career, mate. We had six, only 16 fights in total. Yeah. You could have had more if you wanted, I, I think. I could have easily. I could have had more. I think from boxing side of things, it's a business, isn't it? It is. And I always like, I says, when it comes a bit more experience, or else, Cal, I'll take a fight. I wanted to, that's it sounds. I even wanted to come back as a journeyman at one yeah. point when we were going through family size, we were going through IVF and we needed money. I said, mm. I'll come back. I said, I'll go on road, I'll fight. And he said, You're not going on, you can't go on road to the I says, Listen, I said, I'll go on road. If we need some money, I'll go fight. And I'm like, yeah, but you'll not go to win and stay at it way. I'll lose and stay at it way. I says, well, no, but I can still go <laughs> fight. And I'm like, you're not. So, no. But yeah. I what? can't imagine you're at Rome. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's no. just not your style, is it? No. Especially if someone caught you. you, you I can see that aggression just coming out. I'd be, I'd be an entertaining road man, wouldn't I? Oh, road definitely. Road, yeah. Well, yeah. that's why Barbarian, what nickname, wasn't it? Yeah, well, like I said, when I first started, it was uh, Jack the Lad, because I'd come from, mm. obviously, Barnsley, town, working doors, obviously knowing everyone, selling boatloads of tickets, because I'm a bit of Jack the Lad, there, there, bum, bum, right, that's you know. Thinking, I can't really have a Jack the Lad no more. I'm more, like I say, I had a fight and that. I thought I'm going to have to... Changed this, so that's why I went to back to when I was a young kid. I used to be known as Ben, ben the Barbarian. Did that? Because I used to be running around the street with skinhead, little bruiser. Sounds like me. But <laughs> running around with skinhead. It, we're always saying, we say, oh, look at this little chun- chunky lad here with thing. I ticked off, chuffing hell, he's ripped to death. Who was this? <laughs> <laughs> but that's how it was. So a little rounded skinhead and then be shredded underneath about eight year old. Well, we have actually grow up. Uh, Doddeth. Oh, Doddeth, right. So, yeah, um, Barnsley lads from, like I said, Doddeth and then what I'm of a Braley now. Like that? Yeah. Which you're truly living off, I've got some land. I'd love to live off land. I know, I've but... heard, we had a word about this on Ryan Hardy's. There this were rumours going around. more than once, I'm sure it has. It has. So it's not true then? You haven't got the land? No, I've tried and tried, I've looked into it, but it's all... Missus, it's to be fair, it's missus a bit of a pullback on that because it's conspiracy head into it and how we all work ah. and all this COVID, it set people off. And I've always been believer in natural and whatnot, natural healing and everything, like I said, from previous things. And then I just don't drink, don't do this out of there. I'm thinking, I'm as natural as I possibly can be. How can I possibly be any natural? Well, I grow my own food and I'm thinking, you start looking to how we get food and what's sprayed on it and mm. what we're drinking and everything. I'm thinking, I, I don't want this. I want to be as natural as possible. So, like, our water that we drink, it's all distilled water in our house. will not mm. drink anything. As food's organic, as meat's pasture-fed. So everything I eat is as clean as what I can possibly do while living in this matrix. We are yes. completely pulling myself off it and being self-sufficient. Yeah. So I've kind of. It's, it's not easy to do. No, no. Oh, that's what it. That's what kind of put it to stop it because you still need to get that income and whatnot to. Yeah. Joining this type of life, but yeah, I'd I'd love to live off land. And my aim is when my kids are old enough to up and bugger off, I'll uh, I will have my own land, but I'll have like a little. Like people say, travellers, I'd have a little caravan on a piece of land, and that's that's where I'm wanting. Yeah, yeah. it's more a lodge than statics. It's a lodge. That's what I'll that's what I'll have. So I've probably got another ten, fifteen year of living in a house, and then I'll be in a caravan. Ah, but would I stay around here, or would I go somewhere up coast? Um, to be fair, it's a tough one that. I'd I'd love to. I looked at land down Cornwall and everywhere. I, I did. I looked at Wales, Cornwall. Um, Miss has got a lot of ties to her family. She's very close to her family. Yeah. Whereas me, I didn't speak to me. Dad is is not here now. I didn't speak to him for probably three, four years. Mm. My mum, I can go. She only lives in Cuddeth, only yeah. down the road, and I can go weeks and months without speaking to her, which is not really a good thing. But I've got my own family. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's hard. Three young kids. I'm working. I'm coming back. 
So I'd, I'd just pick my family up and go anywhere. Sounds interesting, that, mate. So that's something to look forward to in future. Can you remember your debut if we're going to your boxing? Definitely. Can you pronounce his name? Oh. He's a Russian guy. And, Andre. Is Andre Sipru. Sip, Sipru. Yeah. What are you, a tough nut? Absolutely. I, I knew it. I knew we were going to be a. I, I, I mean, I had no idea who you fought from the beginning because I've heard of him before, but I looked. It's very hard to do, but I looked at his picture on BoxRec and he looked an absolute animal. He was tiny. He was absolutely tiny. I got told, right, this is my weight, this one coming. I thought, yeah, sound, no problem. So I think we were like 11, 11, 8, 11, 9 or something on day weight. And so I thought, yeah, sound, make it, come in. He was always lighter than you. I'm like, but you've told me he's coming at this weight. Yeah, sound is 11, it says fate's going ahead. I went, right, no problem. Fate come out. When it glins. I think you've heard Carl talking about it. There's a thing going right, Jim. Mickey Ward. Yeah. Head body, head body. And Carl dinked me. That's the only time, like I say, I've never been down in a fight ever. Carl dropped me once in a, in sparring. And he dropped me. I'd been to Benidorm on a three-day bender. <laughs> come back, and I'm stuck inside the ring. I thought, right, hey, I'm just going to do a bit of bags and that. Mess about, get back into it, get sweat going. Carl's in the ring. He says, you're sparring. I says, I'm sparring. I've just been to Benidorm three days. Come on, get in. I said, I'm not going. Wayne Reed's in. Get in, you puff. Yeah. So, <laughs> Wayne. I go on. I'll show you. I'll Every show time. You. I'll, I'll get in. Next thing time, bang. Oh, I went straight to the corner. I started throwing me rocks. Look, the Jack Daniels coming off. Like, no, that's it. But yeah, basically that old shot, Mickey Ward, goes into Sebchenko, whatever you know what Sebchenko, that word, Sipur. Bang, bang, tap. Bang, wallop. Body shot. Boom. Sank him straight. And I thought, this is for me, this program, yeah. I like this. Next thing you know, I've gone for it again. He's gone, dink, clip me with head. I thought, oh, shit, I've got something running down my face here, is it? Mm. Went back to the corner, Glenn, right, you've got a cut on your right eye. I thought, oh, oh no. I thought that was something. He says, yeah, he says, it's pretty bad, but it should be all right. So what is it then? He says, so what? He says we need to get him out of there. Because, right, what shot shall I throw? I don't fucking know. <laughs> Hitting with kitchen sink if you want. <laughs> Two or three said that about it. So I'm thinking, you're watching Faye. Brilliant. Like, I'm thinking, like, I'm thinking in my head, obviously looking back at time now, I'm thinking looking forward and back into, I'm thinking, if Wager had been in Faye, I'm thinking, I know what shot Wager likes. I know, I'm thinking, what shot could catch that kid with? Try and throw this, try and draw this out and tweet him with that. I get from Glenn hitting with fucking kitchen sink. <laughs> I'm thinking, what the heck? I, I know, I goes out and I'm just, I, I tried, tried everything to get him out of there. Hit him, wobble. I'm thinking, I'm looking, watch that video back, I'm looking, ref must have tried to jump in about three times and then he'd throw a couple of shots and not yeah. thinking, Chuff. so I didn't I didn't get a stoppage on my debut, which I wanted, I wanted So he was stoppage. small then, actually, yeah. that's why I don't look on box rec, because very rare you can find many photos on them when you look on them. Yeah. So obviously sometimes on box rec, there were other photos, but as you know on box rec, it's yeah. just a face, isn't it? Yeah. He looked a right tough nut, so yeah. you're, only, you're only tiny. I think I were... Uh, I'm 5'11", he must have been about 5'9", or something, 5'8", yeah. Mm. He, were, he was small, so like I said, to do him with a body shot and all, I were like, quite a decent dinks. I used to spy round after round with Carl, who were always taller than me. I used to I, I used to love fighting bigger kids, mm. but yeah. Um, Tough nut then, mate. But then we moved on to that, mate, and we had, an, we had the first um, stoppage, didn't we, against um, Simon Jenkinson? Yes, Christmas show. Yeah. Yeah, I can uh, can remember that. I still speak to Simon as well, and, and Chris, Twinny is a good junior. You should get him on here as well. Have you got him on it? Or, no. No, Twinny will be a good one for you. Well, bring him on. He's, Pass uh, his number of it. Yeah, he's good. Um, but yeah, Simon Jenkinson from Manchester. Um, I say you're young and that, you think this is who you're fighting, blah, blah, and you, you do a little research yeah. as a fighter, I'm thinking, to a final, it's a good kid this. I'm looking at videos, and I'm thinking... Got to be up for this one, and um, yeah, I uh, I can remember I dropped him with a left hook. Both us, both through. Like you see him on YouTube, don't you? We both put so same shot, and yeah. two fighters get knocked out. Obviously, we both threw the same left hook. He hit me, I hit him, but he went down. <laughs> um, yeah, I thought right, that that were all right, and then I put a stop to. I think it was next round. I think yeah, third round stoppage. Ref jumped in. That must have felt good though, mate. Getting your first nice Christmas present, yeah, yeah, Just definitely. before Christmas, yeah. It was. Did you like to study your opponents then, Ben? Um, when I first started, I don't care what anyone says. You 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 look at me, you think, oh, am I good enough? I'm testing. I only had thirteen amateur fights, um, and then because I only had thirteen amateur fights, like I said, 
I literally went into Glen Rose's gym at nineteen, just just twenty. I think I was. Too, I think I was pro at twenty two. Wow, so a quick turnover so then, really. Like fun. I said, I just I, it come to a point where I just could do the Glens. I'd finish works working at council here. It were never. It were always just to put me on job. I was thinking, mm. I want something else. I want something else. I want to do this. I want to do that. And it would finish at four o'clock. Done off to the gym. Finish at four o'clock. Off done. But more than likely, I'd used to drive to what job where I was finishing, and I'd be off through to Sheffield for four o'clock because Carl were a bin man. Carl Wild were yeah. a bin man. He'd be finished. He'd be there. We'd be in Glynn's gym before even Glynn were there. Yeah. And next thing, you know, Glynn would be coming in. We'd just spar six rounds, and it were every day. Every day we'd do six three, six three, six three, six three. Mm-hmm. So I'm boxing amateurs doing six three, six three, six three. He's then gone to pro six three, six, and then and and he fast tracked me. I thank Carl a lot for that. He proper helped me out, like do this, do that, and we guide each other. And then it comes to a point where we kind of get get. I think, and I'm I'm holding my own here. Yeah. It's not it's not even no, it's not like a thing than not a what was I say not a not a training lesson yeah. for him. It's becoming a good training lesson for each other. And then obviously I turned pro and whatnot. And then yeah, it were uh, I, I still. I still thank Carl a lot for what he did for me. Well, he's a gentle giant and all. Is Carl lovely? Uh, I mean, when I saw him down it, when I met him the first time, I saw him and I thought, "Fucking hell!" You yeah. know what I mean? But he's the only one who's bigger than you, yeah. apart him, from him Miles. Him and Miles, only yeah. two we've had. They've been taller than yeah. this. But like you said, a cut miss for a more, you know, yeah. a nicer bloke. And uh, yeah, it's a good person to have on board, isn't it? And I'm going to mention this one next, mate. We had Dan Blackwell, didn't we? Yeah, bit of a warrior, wasn't he? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Dan Blackwell, I uh, I boxed him. Funny story with that. Like I said, I didn't speak to my dad because my mum and my dad split up while I was boxing. And that night before I went to get to fight Dan Blackwell, I was <laughs> I got arrested for a fray in Barnsley. Right? Oh dear! I know, but I, I I was the only one to get not guilty, so it never happened. Ah, it never happened. <laughs> so I I didn't get get prosecuted for that. But the police officers stayed in touch with me because used to talk to each other ever so walking around. Anyways, my mum rung me saying, blah, 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 this has gone off. My dad, uh, your dad's this. And I says, listen. I says, ring police. I says, Cause if I come through, I'm killing him. I'm fighting tomorrow. I said, I don't want nothing to do with this. Anyways, she rings police and next thing you know, my phone goes, Naz ringing me, police officer. I thought, Hey, up now, is he all right? He goes, uh, he says, yeah, man, I've had a phone call to your mum and dad's house. I went, yeah, yeah, just, just really take him away. He says, what, what do you mean? I said, just take him away. I says, arrest him. I said, just do something and I'll get my mum and my sister out. He says, I can't just, I says, Naz, for me. He went, right, I'll just take him for questioning. I says, I just need an hour or whatever. He says, yeah, sound, no problem. So he takes him away. So then I'm at my mum's house, my dad's house packing their, my mum and my sister's suitcases up, moving them to my auntie's house, and then chuffing next day, the next night, so I'm doing that like 10, 12, 10 till 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. Next day I'm fighting Dan Blackwell. But, so I were absolutely, I'm, I'm thinking... I'm not surprised. I were absolutely knackered, but the maid were racing, but I'm thinking, I've got to put a statement out here, I've got to put a statement out, Dan Blackwell don't get stopped, Dan Black, I'm going to stop him, I'm going to stop him. And I can remember I hit him with an overhand right. And I thought, I've do, I've banjoed him in. I've got it. His watch for his legs gone in a second. I think I'm after him. So I've gone, whoa, tried to fill him in with everything I'd got. No, didn't get him out of there. And then he come back third and fourth round. And I'm mm. thinking, I had no left in me. So I won that fight by a point, I think. But mm. I'll be honest, I probably would have given it a draw. Just well, for a simple fact yeah. that I think I blew up. It was a four-round fight. I'm not a four-round fight. I never have been a four-round no. fight. Like I said, even as an amateur, we're spanning six threes. So for me to go out for four rounds, I, it were it were a good fight, good test. His, his nose were absolutely all over his face. <laughs> yeah. like, I, I got gloves back. I bought the gloves. Cause obviously, after your fight, I, I wanted every glove. I wanted that glove. Yeah, you will like that, won't you? I want that glove. Mm. I want that. So I bought the gloves. I can remember taking a picture of them when I got home. They were on my kitchen floor and they were absolutely covered in claret. <laughs> and I'm there going, I've got to clean these, have not I, before I use them? It's not my blood. Like, oh. But yeah, you clean them off and then you use them for training, bag gloves and... Yeah, but you were, you were some tough nut, one of your black Very, one. very. Toughest, mm. toughest I thought. And then we had a bit of a tough time, didn't we? With Joe Walsh, didn't we? A draw, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, Joe Walsh, yeah. Because like I said, I'd gone... Yeah, I'd, I'd had them two fights. 
And then I had one fight. If I said we're at Glynn's then I had one fight with Wales. One for me. Went to back to Glynn's. Like I said, I was never ashamed. If I, if I think something's better, I'll go something's better and I'll yeah. say whatever. So I went back with my tail between my legs to Glynn's. I says, right, I'll come back. I went, yeah, Sam, no problem. Had the fight with Joe Walsh. And because I kind of went back with my tail between my legs, or like, I listen to everything, says Alfred. So I'm boxing, I'm boxing. Comes out to set into rounds and boxing, come back. Don't get involved with this kid. Don't get involved with this kid. I'm thinking, I'll just listen to what I'm doing, listen to what I'm told. Come back at end of round. So it's a draw. I'm thinking, why have I just not got involved with someone? Why have I tried to box someone? Yeah. I it's not what you want it. No, I looked at corner and Glenn weren't there and I thought, I'm off. I'm, I'll go somewhere else where, where I'm on. So I'm like, Carl, I need to go find someone else. Carl, my manager, time, Greaves. Mm. I was kind of wanting Carl to say, come and train with me. Or I was looking for other people. I said, what about, oh, I've, I, I wanted, I don't know, I wanted something. Yeah. So it's so like saying, I, I always thought Clinton, I might go to Clinton Woods. Or, I wasn't ever scared of travelling. I'd, I'd drive 40 minutes a day just to get to the gym. I was in a gym every day, day in, day out. There was never no question of my dedication. I just wanted someone to say, go to this bit, go to that. Anyway, says, try Sean Thickett. We'll get this. Is, it's a bit far. He says, no, if you said Sean Thickett, I'll try Sean Thickett. I didn't really know a note about Sean. I'd just seen him have Ryan Hardy out once. I think he had Ryan Hardy. And I can remember looking at Ann, Ann Raps. You know, when people when fights the Raps, I'm thinking Sean's wrapping Ryan's hands. I'm thinking... They look a bit of a mess. I was a bit of a obsessive yeah. person. I think everything had to be neat. I'm a weirdo. I have to put my left shoe on first. I have to put my left glove on first. I have to put my left right. Box thing in. Jamie Sheldon's just saying, wrap your hands. I put my left hand. They went, no, I wrap your right hand first. No, you don't. I'm fighting. Wrap my left hand. No, all right. I says, well, I'm not fighting then. Yeah. I've left. So I wrapped my left hand. And I bet that was Frankie Borg, that. But yeah. Mm. So anyway, so he said, Sean, thick it. So I'm like, hey, right, I'll go. Fine, no problem. So I went through to Sean's. Probably nicest kid in boxing, I think, from yeah. training point of view, and it was just brilliant from start start to finish with Sean. Not a bad thing to say about him. I I left Sean after Joe Melenda for English title, mm-hmm. and that were a good fight. We good fight, I won it. It was a very good fight, end, Joe it? Melenda. Yeah, um, I think I could have bet him if I had two hands. Yeah, because I boxed Frankie Borg. Straight away, you've got English title eliminator, Joe Melinda. Yeah. Um, I thought, I've been this position, but like I just said, I'd done my shoulder prior to thingy, and I went through a 10-week camp with one hand mm. with Sean Thicket as my coach. That's when I... Then I got into the fight, and as the fight progressed, I thought, right, I'm going to do what I did to Frankie Borg here. Bang, s- strong left jab to put him in his place, firstly. I did that. He did... What I did to Kieran Gray, dipped into it, boom, yeah. top of his head. I thought, fucking hell. Gone. My hand had gone. So my left hand swelled up, massive. And I'd done my right rotator. I think I've got no no hand here, what can I do? So anyway, I got stopped on my feet. Oh, I can remember it now, I on ropes. And I was just rolling, moving my head, rolling. Yeah. And ref come in and says, stop boxing. I says, what's up? He goes, fate is obvious. I says, why? He says, you're not punching. I says, fair tools, I can't. Yeah. And that's what I said back to him. I says, fair tools, I can't. Mm, but that, that was were it. You were a good fighter, would you, actually? Yeah. But going back to that, mate, Yeah. I've been told to mention that Kieran Gray wants to be back in his own time for a rematch. <laughs> My fighting days are done. <laughs> he said he's, that, that he owes him, that did his hand in. Yeah, I did. I did. I can remember. I can remember that fight, yeah. He, uh, he, was, he was a good fight, I said, Kieran Gray. I thought, I thought when I won when I, when I, when first title fight, that wasn't it? Mm. When it first title fight, yeah. Yeah, well, first title fight in hometown, eight rounder, British Masters. Like I say, I won't bother about what belt I won or anything. Yeah. I just wanted that Welsh title. Because I didn't get that Welsh title, then it was like before, after I'm thinking, well, I thought I was going to get that Welsh title, then to be fair, that was yeah. before. I was more bothered about looks. And I've seen the British Masters titles. And can you remember old Central Area titles? Before it were brown, yes. it yeah. was an horrible red, red thing. Red colour. Yeah. Horrible, massive really red one, thing. One of them. Yeah, and I'm like, I don't want one of them. I want the Masters ones. They look better. Yeah. Because I won't bother about. All that. I, won't, I, yeah. I, won't, I won't really a boxing fan. I got into boxing just to try and square me. I don't really give me something yeah. to drive towards and a bit of aim. And obviously, I'll, I, didn't, I didn't mind a scrap. So 
they were like, oh, well, they're masters, me. And then so I like, right, I've, I kept passing, get me a masters, get me one of the masters. She says, right, we'll have an eight rounder for masters bronze. I went, yeah, yeah whatever, whatever it is. Kieran Gray, uh, he came out, he went, he went fast. I'm thinking, he's slapping me. He's, he's not even punching me. He's sla-. I'm thinking, he's slapping hard, though. Uh-uh. He was like one of them Carl Frotch, yeah. not for Carl Zaggy. He's slapping me, he's slapping hard, though. But yeah, and he was, he was quite relentless. And then I think I turned him, I think he went fifth fifth round or something. I turned him and hit him with a couple of beauties. And then sixth round, he came out. And I really started to get topside him on six. But he also, I think he hit me on fifth round, I think it was fifth where he hit it, and I heard it. I heard him, like, wince a little bit. And then sixth round obviously happened, and then yeah. he didn't come out for seventh or eighth. He, he said to me, he said, it was, it was a really good fight. He said, I hit my hand on his head, and he said, he just beat me up. Yeah. <laughs> so what you've just said there is just... Um, it's what it was, mate. What, yeah. what, what he it says. Was really, it was, like I said, I really struggled with people, mate, my first few rounds. I, I had to I had to get it to get timing tonight. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So... First few rounds, I don't think I really won any fights. It were always mm. later on, but he, yeah, he definitely come out. Like I say, it was a good, it, it were a good title, early title fight to set me up. Yeah, for because I was just boxed ten rounds. Then after that, I didn't really mm. didn't come down. I think yeah. I boxed one eight rounder after that. And then you had a good fight after that, mate, as well. You had Lewis Taylor, didn't you, in Sheffield? Yeah, another one. IBO Youth yeah. World Title. That mm. that that's up in my gym in house. That them is it. Them uh, shorts with IBO on. Because nice. That's probably one of my best achievements. Boxing for a world title. Yeah, I think it was good. But yeah, uh, it was a good fight though, Lewis. Lewis were on amateur scene when I was amateur scene, but I want big on amateur scene. So I'm saying I had probably eight month fight in amateur, mm. but. I can remember fighting at oh, it's, it's Sheffield. Might be I don't think it's Parsons. Might it be Parsons. Cross. Definitely in Sheffield. We yeah, fought him. yeah. But I, that were that I can remember the fight. But I can remember seeing him at an amateur show prior. Yeah, I think it was Parsons Cross, and it were at a championships. And I was fighting. I didn't make weight, not through my own doings, not making weight, but I just didn't have enough time. They were saying, "Right, you're fighting this week." That's our amateur. What you're fighting this week? Yeah. I'm like. Hey, well, you're fighting, it's championships. What's championships weight? 75 kilo. I'm thinking, 75 kilo? I'm like, I don't know, 79. I think I can't get down to 75 kilo. I'm good, but I'm not that good. Not yeah. in this amount of time. So anyway, I end up fighting at 81 kilo against a kid who wore a true 81 kilo, now like 77. Mm. Um, lost the fight, but he was on the Sheffield bill yeah. as well. and. Obviously, there were talks around him being this and other by us. So I stayed and watched it, and I watched him fight. And I thought, when we're pro, I'll have him. Yeah, I just thought, when we're pro, I'll have him. If they keep hyping him up like this, I thought, I'll have it. And then, like I said, I, ne- I don't drink now, I never drank when I was bodybuilding. Boxing, for some reason, it was you go through a camp, you fight, you go get drunk, like whatever. And I just moved into my house. My family house now that I'm in now, uh, we knocked it back to brick. I'm decorating. Phone rings. Carl Greaves. I've got your fire, Ben. All right, yeah, brilliant. When? Um, I don't know. Who is it? Um, Lewis Taylor. I thought, yes, definitely, I'll take it. I went, you haven't heard it all yet? I went, I don't need to say all. I'll take it. He says, it's in two weeks. I went, ah. Oh. I'm sat decorating the stairs with a can of, I think it was Stella, and a pizza outside of me. Yeah. Decorating thing, I'm thinking. I'll take it. He went. I mean, it's too weak. I went. Just give me two minutes. I looked on my phone. It gets better. I'm looking at my phone. Types it in. Where I'm stopping. I flew on holiday two days after an all inclusive for a week with family. Ah. So I I took the fight the day two days before I jumped on the plane for an all inclusive holiday. I was thirteen. I think I was thirteen one or something. And I had to make eleven six in two weeks, so I'd basically gone from that fight saying, "Yeah, I'll take it." We kind of sell this out of the blah blah, because I just fancied my chances against him. I thought, "I'll knock him out." I'll, I just, I, I just knew that I could do it. Anyways, um, took the fight, looked on or something for Ventura, uh, and I looked on thing. Ingles gym were there, but it weren't really yeah. like now it's hyped up as yeah, it, is, yeah. it weren't. It were a, a bloke called Steve Bailey who had the gym, um, and I just used to run to Steve Bailey's uh, every every uh, every day. 
So I ran there, ate a bag, ran back, ran there, ate a bag, ran back. Sometimes on a night, go for another run. And I went to an all-inclusive holiday and ate no, but boiled eggs, took my own rice cakes, <laughs> took my own rice cakes in suitcase, boiled eggs, fish, white fish and salad. Come to end the holiday, nobody did sit near me. I absolutely stunk. <laughs> I'm sat there, right? And family's here going, oh, I, I can smell it. Yeah. I just said that much white fish, it was just oozing oh, out of yeah. you. Like, what? Sweating yeah. out on you. Yeah. So I get back, like, so if it's two weeks at fight, it's like coming down, check weight time. I only had a chance to make one check weight. It says, right, when's your check weight? So I've landed on, I think it will landed on Monday or something. I had check weight booked in for two weeks. It says, make check weight Wednesday. So I says, I can't do it no later. So well, I'm not here. I says, right, it's Medic Wednesday. So I got back because I knew by flying, you hold water. If you notice, like a lot of fighters will go abroad and mm. then they've struggled to make weight because by weight, I don't know what it's air and whatnot, you, your body naturally holds onto water. So I knew that. So I thought, I don't want to come back and make this thing because I'll not make it. So anyways, I've got back, I've looked on scales, I'm thinking, chuff, you know, I'm heavy here. But then in my head, I knew that I wouldn't be, so I'm like flushing it out, flushing mm. it out, saunered, come back, trained, flushed it, plenty of water, got rid of myself from holding this water, gets back on scales, I'm thinking, right, I'm a bit heavy, but I'll make it. So anyway, it goes through, foot check weight, makes check weight, fine, yeah, blah, 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 comes back, trained, ate some food, my weight's back up again, I'm thinking... Right, it's fine, no problem, I know what to do anyway. Comfort scales, get some scales for weighing, piss weight, 11.5. Dennis Hobson's there saying, looking at me, is he going, yes, and just to let you know, there will be a, a, a drug test after <laughs> this fight. I'm thinking, yeah, all right, mate, no chance. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, a box Lewis Taylor. I think, same as same I said, we wager fast, I'm not doing out for four rounds because uh, I knew that I couldn't. Yeah. I'd had one sparring. I sparred Wayne Reed, I think it was, for 10 rounds or something coming up. It might, it might not even been Wayne, uh, but he were in gym at the time. Um, so I had one 10 round spar. So then in my head, I think I got, I don't really think it was Wayne, it might have been someone else, but I can remember got my head punched in for like 10 rounds and it was like, I just knew I could do the rounds then. So yeah. then I. Uh, yeah, fight went on four rounds. I think I brought my cheekbone in the second round. Uh, I come back to corner because <laughs> Carl were in my corner because Sean Thicke had Ryan Hardy at the same time at another venue. And me and Milo thinking, he says, who do you want, Sean or, or me to the corner? And I've, I'm thinking to myself, I just don't want Sean to wrap my hands. I, just watch I went, I'll have you, Carl, please, if you can, mate. So I had Carl and his come back after the second round. Is he going, look at me. I says, what's up? He goes, you've brought your, you've brought your, che- you've brought your jaw. I went, I've not brought my jaw, mate. It's my cheek. Give me my gum shield. Mm. He's like looking at me. I says, looking round at referee. I goes, I'm right. Give me my gum shield. So he gives me a gum shield. I goes back out. Third, third round, come back. Fourth, fourth round is he going, Ben, it don't look good, mate. Your face. He says, listen to me. My mm. jaw is fine. It's my cheek. Give me my gum shield. So give me a gum shield. Went out. I went, wallop. I hit him with a right hand in fifth round. His legs were banjoed, honestly. I've nearly filled I'm thinking, I've got this stoppage. Blah, blah, blah. Went out. Come back after the fifth. Is he going, sit back down. Get back out there and fucking give me some <laughs> stuff. I'm thinking, this is more like it. So then I went out. Six had a good, I think I won fifth, sixth, seventh. And then eight for like, oh, mm. and then he won nine for ten, so he won by two points over a ten round fight on two weeks' notice. And that, weeks were, that were a tough camp, mate. That then, money you should be proud of yourself with that against a cracking fighter as well. Not even a camp, was it? I just well, that's what I mean. But chuffing. what you had to go through, yeah, you should be proud of that, mate. Definitely, it was stinking a fish, yeah. It was, uh, it was horrible, yeah. What's the next you on playing? Don't worry about. <sighs> <laughs> I, I was just trying to keep away from kids, I think. I, <laughs> I went dieting and I, and I had one at a time, Jacob, bless him. Nah, bless he, him. He went viral on the internet on pads. Did he? Jacob, I've yeah. seen that video. Yeah. Yep. Two I years old. That. I have seen yeah. that, mate. You'll have to look at that, mate. I it's a good little it. video. Yeah. And then we'll move on to... Um, right, it started off bad in the double, but we got the revenge in the second, didn't we? Mr. Biles. Mikey Biles, yeah. Yes. And I remember the first fight, mate, and... I will, I come to watch you at that show and I watched the weigh-in and he looked so confident on that day. Yeah. Um, and I thought, I must tell me, I didn't think he stood a chance against me. Yeah. 
But he come past me and he nodded and he, he said, I fancy this. And he obviously, the way it did stop, it was a bit bad, wasn't it? Like, you know, yeah. the eye and stuff. Um, um, like I said, my face gives him yeah, before me. Yeah. Um, it was one of them. I'd... I've messed about my diet a bit, a little bit, I don't know, but I'd kind of, I think I'd been on my weight too, mm. too soon type of thing anyway. Anyways, whatever happened, it hit me with a right uppercut, bit of a freak shot, and it clipped me right underneath my eye. Yeah. And it was just proper on, on that bone. Mm. And it just went, whoa, straight away, first round. Yeah. That was it, shut, eyes shut. Referee says I'm stopping fight. Or what? It's second or third round. Or something. I'm not quite. 100% I don't even sure. know. I didn't even. But I didn't even get a feel for him. Or I just. I thought I just gotta. I've gotta win it. I've gotta do this. Put this right. Yeah, because. But he walked. He walked past me in that first fight, and he was confident enough. Yeah. So respect to him for that. But obviously, the second one. The second one. I just. I just knew I'd put it right. I knew. Yeah. I, I knew. As after it's I'm not being big headed or out, but. His levels in the boxing yeah. type of thing, and. Way that he threw his shots, way that he was when I felt him when he was, I'm thinking, I'm better than this kid. Yeah. I knew I was. So obviously I got revenge and I think I knocked him out in fourth, I think it was. Because I bet that first and it must have hurt that first loss. It did. It, it were upsetting. I know you were upset. Ben did say to me it was a bit. It was upsetting. Like I yeah. said, you can't expect to win everything, like I said, but and you become. Like I, said, I don't know. It was just. It were. It were. It was a stinker how it happened, but that were past. I was there to be hit at that, that time. Yeah. I were, I, like I said, Glenn used to go mad, move your head. Mm. Everyone said, move your head, and I never did. Yeah. And like I said, later on in my career when I met Dave Utley, he realised that I didn't move my head. Mm. So he adapted my style of fighting to Arthur Abraham's style, yeah. where my hands were there, not me relying on moving my head. And... Mm. But we were good at Biles getting it rematch. I think you deserve that. Yeah, very and good. It were, um, it were obviously you got what you wanted in the yeah. second one, but credit to Biles for that because I didn't give him a chance. And no. you know, you're better than I thought he was. Yeah, and um, we'll have to let him know. We give him a mention, bless him. So, obviously, we talked about just after that, your greatest for me, your best win against Borg. It was amazing. Yeah, uh, I was dead chuffed when you won that one, mate. Yeah, and I must admit, I'm don't give me a snarl, but I thought you were going to lose that fight. And I was yeah. ch- honestly chuffed that yeah. you won that, especially with the build-up like we talked about earlier when Selby come across. I thought they mean business. Yeah, Boxing ability, definitely. Yeah, but He had miles more boxing ability than me. We had a shadow of doubt. But like I said, I just have that that fighter's mentality that as you hit me, I'll hit you harder. And it, that was one of my, um, my favourite wins in Barnes of that one, mate. I was dead chuffed for yeah. you that one. No, I really was. And obviously we have, we've talked about Melander and then you had two fights, didn't you, towards back end, but you had two nice KO wins, didn't you, in Barnsley, didn't you? Yeah, well, after that, obviously I did my shoulder spar in Langford and I had two fights with an half-knackered shoulder then a fully-knackered shoulder. So then it was like, I, I think I boxed Melander. Mm. And I, was, I had a shoulder operation booked in, put it this way, before I boxed with Melander. Mm. So we're in a bit of a bad situation, but my missus had just had... Isaac, which is middle child, um, had not worked. I'd claimed paternity. So I had not worked. She won't work in. I'm thinking I need some money here. I've got to take this fight. So there's no way I could pull out of it. Yeah. And I thought if I can get him out early, then obviously that's it. And I always fancied my chance because, like say, you look back at fighters and he'd been yeah. done early. He'd, had, he'd been banjoed early by someone. So yeah. I'm thinking, right, I can, if I can do this, I'm all right. And, I tried, like I said, hit him, hit him first round with a couple of decent ones and then that would hit my shoulder, just packed in. But like yeah. I said, then you had two wins at Metrodome, didn't you, I think? Two yeah. Two both stoppages, weren't they, as well? Yeah, I uh, I came back at... Did I come back at middleweight as well? I think I did, but I struggled to make weight because mm. obviously I'd had a long time out ballooning up a little bit. Um, that It was Sudoku, that one, I think it was. David Sudoku. Yeah, so on. And I looked back... And I'm thinking this kid I'm being stopped. I want I'm coming back with a statement here. I think I knocked him out. Not many did. Yeah, that was it. I knocked him out. So I thought right because I looked at who we'd been in with as mm-hmm. well. I think he'd been in with like Brian Rose and yep. Armfield and this other. Sort of and I was supposed to fight Jack Armfield as well. That got pulled out. That was supposed to fight him instead of Frankie Borg. Jack Armfield gets mentioned quite a lot. Yeah. In fact, he'll be getting mentioned on um, 
At least just tomorrow probably yeah. as well. I do message Jack from. I used to like. You know, I'd been a good fight that you know. Mate. Yeah. I'd been a good one to have a resume I'd as well. To, I'd love to fight Jack Arnfield because he was built for me. Yeah. After sparring round and round with Carl Wilde, Jack Arnfield, I I reckon I'd have, I'd have done him and that'd have been a massive statement for me. Right. So I don't like to mention this one. Right. <laughs> I think you're going to smile and say, but we had a true legend, didn't we, with Daryl Sharp? Yes. What happened there? This is where boxing and the business comes in. I so, thought there might have been something, yeah. Yeah, so basically I'd boxed Sadouka, stopped him, and I was like straight back chomping a bit. Yeah, yeah, Adam Gabriel, didn't you, as well, after that? Yeah, stopped I didn't, him I didn't, as well. I didn't, I, that's what I mean, it was like a bit of an empty fight, that. Yeah. I won on some makeshift belt, I went mm. for it, but it was an empty fight. And by an empty fight, I meant I was chomping a bit. I'd just come back from fighting it. Well, in my eyes, Welsh title, English title, eliminator. Then I had a comeback fight against that Sudoku. That was it then. I wanted to be straight back into that mix. level. I wanted to be mm. straight back into that mix. And Carl was saying, no, no, we've got this way. And boxing a business, it's like the one ticket sellers on home shows. Oh, yeah. So I'm like, right, right, I'll do it, I'll do it. So I box this kid and I just, I was just going through emotions with him and Basically, ref stopped fighting six ranks. I was just beating him up. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't knock him out. I didn't drop him. I didn't out. And it there were no coming back anyway. That fight happened. Then it was like, right, I want this central area fight. Nathan Wheatley. I thought, yes, this is it. Good fight. Fact first, first of all, now what they come at? He said, he said, I might have you another fight. I said, oh, this was Marcus Morrison. Mm. I thought that'd be a good one. I love Marcus Morrison. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Says to Dava, Dave Uli, I says. Marcus Morrison went, no. I went, why no? He says, because you're going to them. I says, you're coming through. You've just had this. He says, let them come to you. You'll build your team. I'm thinking, right, whatever, I'll listen. I'll listen to you about that. And I, I kind of kicked him his hand there because he went on and lost to uh, the fight. I went to watch it. Well, I should have been fighting with MEN on, yeah. the, on Corolla and... Oh, I don't know. It, it, it don't really matter, mate. He boxed anyway on this show... And it were a big bill in Manchester, massive. And this Nathan Wheat and, and that Morrison were on that fight. And he was boxing Welburn, I think it was. Mm. He got done over by yeah. him. He lost. I'm thinking, that could have been me, that WBC thing. I yeah. fucking should have had that. But I went at the time to watch Nathan Wheatley, who I yeah. was supposed to be fighting. So I'm watching this Nathan Wheatley. I'm thinking, it was against Chris Jenkinson. Yeah. I'm thinking, I thought, this is made for me, this central area, tick, done. Yeah. I think I've, is mine, 100%. Anyways, so I'm going through camp thinking I'm fighting this Nathan Wheatley. And I start looking at this Nathan Wheatley's thing, profile, I'm thinking he's not putting out about training or all. I'm thinking, is he training or not? What, what What's happened? Has he gone missing? So I says to Carl, I says, is fate happening or what? He says, yeah, 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 everything's sound. So then it's like comes to four week art. I think he's not putting nothing. You know, like usually you get sparring here, doing this, doing that, other than like fight and thing, who's been sparring like that? He's not put a thing on. I'm thinking, is he fucking training? Or where's he gone? What's happening? Next thing you know, two week out. It says, uh, or three, imagine been three week out. It says, uh, it says, oh, he's not fighting that Nathan Wheatley. I'm thinking I've been in a fucking eight week camp. What, what's happening? He says, don't worry. He says, I've got someone to fill in. This is Kieran Farrell. He says, don't worry, I've got someone to fill in. He says, what do you mean? He says, oh, I've got Daryl Sharp. I was like, my heart sunk. I thought, mm. I'm going to look daft here. I knew it. As soon mm. as I thought, this is gonna be. This is my nightmare. Southpaw, tough as all. Yeah, I box southpaws in amateurs, and every southpaw I box, I box like two or three. I'd stopped him because obviously an amateur, it's not. Yeah. You're not. It's not pro game. It's different. I think he's tough as all. Books. I'm, I doubt I'll stop Daryl Sharp, and I don't think he's been has been stopped once or twice now in mm. hundred and odd fights. So I knew it. I wasn't going to stop him. I'm thinking ten rounds with a southpaw is not my cup of tea. One yeah. bit. Uh, and then I look back at it, he's saying, I can't, I can't be fighting a journeyman for this. The week before, he'd boxed down Tel- Telford or something, we're in mm. 8 0 and bet him yeah. on a Kilo Farrell show. So it was like lined up, beat him, I'll put him straight forward for this. Bo- boxing board can't knock it back because he's bet someone yes, who's decent, So yeah. to know. So that's it, that's it, bomb fight happening. I've sold all the tickets, right, laugh. So I've sold loads of tickets to go to Manchester, boxing my nightmare. So yeah, 10 rounds are just. Like I said, got got my head punched in. To be fair, mm-hmm. is uh, is very, very. You can't, you can't. He's fighting at cruiserweight now. Yeah, 
fighting at cruiserweight and not mm-hmm. getting stopped yeah he's been about he knows the game oh, he and does. it's like you say for someone who's don't know boxing or look and think do you think how did he beat him for someone who knows boxing the thing recorder for djs for, man, exactly for someone who knows boxing think hi hi what happened to make that <laughs> fight happen yeah. for a title yeah and that's exactly what happened and yeah. it, it kind of gave me a sink, sink of that and then i thought right well why didn't I? Why didn't I go through them levels? Why didn't I do that? Why did my feet? So I started this question. I thought, am I struggling for weight and body blast? So then I went up to 12 stone. And then, yeah. then we finished off, mate, didn't we? Were it uh, points lost to Dale, Dale Cohen? There were uh, Adam Matthews running before that, weren't there? I know, but we've talked about Adam before, mate. I don't like to talk about that loss. It upsets you, doesn't it, mate? But that uh, was a good fight, you know. That like could have gone said, either that, way. That were that. And then, like you said, that were done. And then it went on to Dale Coyne, yeah, who he were um, best, best, probably best kid I fought. Do you think so? He was mm. better than Bog. Right. For Harry threw his shots together. Harry, yeah, how hard he hit. He were very good. He were Frank Warren fighter, wasn't he? I didn't know that. Yeah, he were under Frank Warren. Um, and... I boxed, I say him again, I'd, I'd been getting ready for things. So I was. I, I came to a point with my career where like, I just wanted fights. I, yeah. I, I was kind of, I was edging towards going on road, but not going on road. I still mm. wanted big fights, but I'd fight them anywhere. I wanted 10 round journey fights, not, do you know what I mean? Like I tried, I tried to get Luke Blackledge fight. Yeah. Tried to fight him, which I thought that'd have been a cracking oh, fight. Of it Tall, would. lanky, I thought that'd have been right. Well, and I kind of wanted to fight on telly yeah that was my thing I thought just show what I can do on telly people realise that how entertaining it is and that's it but it never it did on a crappy not a mainstream thing but that, that was it but yeah that Dale coin um, he hit me with a lovely left hook to the body and I felt it didn't didn't put me down but I felt I thought he throws that well and little shots like a little jab to the body and mm. then could, I'm thinking he's, he's tying everything nice together him um, box with Ava, listened to him, came back after the sixth round. Says, How am I going on? He says, You can touch and go this, mate. I says, He says, it's, it's all in these last two rounds. He says, It's three apiece, if you ask me. I thought, Right, that's our ass score and all. So coming forward constantly, I thought, Dead right. Went out seventh round, hit me with a left hook or something. Next, Ding! I thought, Fucking hell, who's turned buzzer on? <laughs> Chuff me, uh, honestly, on. perfect me, oh. drum. So I'm thinking, what's happening? I'll come back after it's seven. He says, you all right? I went, not fucking really. I said, I can't, you know. <laughs> I said, I can't stand up. He says, I thought, says, just see it rounds out, mate. Just get it in. Get it. So I went out, uh, got 28 days, 40 years, but it didn't matter that we were done. But yeah, uh, he boxed. After that, he boxed a kid called Nick Gemman, who I boxed, who went on to fight. I think he boxed for an IBO mm. title. And I think he might even box Commonwealth. He boxed Luke. Liam Cameron for Commonwealth, mm. Nick Jamman. I bet I bet him over four rounds. Right. And still kept in touch with him. And he messaged me. He, he was going Facebook Live or something. I'd have to, well, I'm not even on Facebook now, but he was doing summer before a fight. And I says, look out for his left up. Yeah. He throws it well. After his fight, he went Facebook Live. He's talking. I've clicked on it. See, I says, unlucky, mate. He starts laughing. Mate. Fucking Ben, you weren't right, wrong with left hook, were you? That's what <laughs> sat him on his ass. Right. Yeah. Don't fight over left hook. Yeah. But obviously, that was the end. It. That's where it all finished, mate. But yeah. um, there was certain circumstance, I think, why you did finish, wasn't there? And, yeah. You know, what it down to West, West Car, wasn't it, would you think? West Car, yeah. yeah. Like I said. He took that, you didn't it? That? Yeah, he did. Like I said, he, I knew I knew Scott from being England's. I also knew Deck from sparring partners yeah. from Carl's. Uh, I knew them both, and to see anyone lose a life, it's just it just puts it all in perspective, doesn't it? Really, when I went, I, I knew about it on the Saturday. It happened on Saturday night, so I knew about it Saturday. It didn't come until on news until Monday. And I can remember it coming on news, and my missus looks and says, "That's why you've been in a motor." Like, mm. What? I suppose it says, you're not fighting. I'm like, what do you mean I'm not fighting? I've just gone through seven weeks or a ten-week camp. I cannot be fighting. You fight, that's it, we're done. I'm thinking, chuff, you know. I'm thinking I've got missus, kids, fighting. I'm sat, and I was, don't know. It's not not worth it, really, for what it is. As great as a sport is. Yeah. It only lasts a short while, doesn't it? So, But I think going to ending it, mate, I think... 
you were in some good wars. There's some good lads you've had on that record. From what you just told me there, there could have been a couple of more decent big names at the time as well. So yeah. unlike, I said this to a lot of them, you should be proud of what you did, mate. You mm-hmm. did us proud in Barnsley, mm-hmm. both you and Ben did. And I just hope going forward we can get another couple of lads like you who can just get this town rocking again. Yeah, it were like I said, any any young kid coming through, I said, I just said, don't go for sponsors that want, want you want from them, just want them to support you. Yeah, that supports massive because it just takes a big weight off your shoulders when you're scratching around trying to scrape hundreds of pounds worth of thousands of pounds worth of tickets, and you're there counting it on an eye, and then it's it's not good. Yeah, it's something you need to do, and it's good advice to take on board that, mate. And all I can say, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on, mate. And thank you for coming on. No, and we'll try and look at in six week, yeah. <laughs> six months. Six months, yeah. Six months. Nailed on. Six months. I'm going to stand to lose in eight weeks. That's my thing. Top man, mate. It's a pleasure to have you on, mate. And Cheers, see you bro. soon, mate. Thank you, mate. Thank you. The Journeyman Cape is produced by James Proud. Music by Ryan Carrier. Special thanks to Rhythmic Studios for hosting. All views expressed are of the guests only. The Journeyman Cave and Horse bear no responsibility for any opinions given. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at The Journeyman Cave. <laughs>